Today, we are going to be taking a look at Minecraft elevators. When boring old stairs won't cut it to move around your base, elevators are here to take you from one floor to another with ease. And you can impress your friends with your amazing building skills. Little well, they know, you just watch this video. We're going to be covering all sorts of different types of elevators. Uh, obviously, the crazy piston redstone designed elevators, and then also a few simpler ones using bubble columns. And Bedrock Edition actually gets like a special thing here. Normally, like, oh, you can do this on Java, but not Bedrock. Or the opposite, you can do this on Bedrock, but not Java. That comes later in the video. Let's start off with piston elevators. These things look so cool because they're literally moving blocks from one place to another and you can ride on those blocks from one floor to another. Basically what these elevators are, are flying machines, which we've had in Minecraft for a while, basically since slime blocks. Instead of flying sideways, they're made to fly vertical and then you can ride them from one floor to another. Flying machines kind of fascinate me because they just look like they shouldn't exist in Minecraft. How do these things work? Most flying machines use a behavior of sticky pistons, where if they are powered with just one tick of redstone, then they will push a slime block and release it there. Technically, it doesn't even have to be a slime block. A sticky piston will grab a block normally, but if it's just a one tick pulse of redstone, then it will push it, and then the next time it gets that same tick of redstone, it'll pull it. One tick of redstone seems like a really difficult thing to get. I mean, if you use a button, it's like a ton of ticks, it's like 20 ticks. It's like way too many ticks. Flicking a lever on like super fast, like how are, how are you gonna time that thing? No, that's not possible. Luckily in the game, there is a block that outputs just one tick and that is the observer. If the observer block sees a block update on its face, then it will send out a one tick redstone pulse. We can use that with the sticky piston so that every time it sees a block update, it will push a block away and it'll stay there. Now, hanging out in space. On Java Edition, the simplest design that I know is an observer, a sticky piston, then two slime blocks. On those two slime blocks, add another observer and another sticky piston with two more slime blocks. This is so dead simple to follow. When the observer on the back side of the machine gets an update, it will push the sticky piston forward, leaving the other half floating in space. Because the other half of the machine was just pushed forward, the observer is saying, there was definitely some type of block update here. Let me send out a pulse. That pulse goes to the other sticky piston, which pulls the other half of the machine toward it. And this chain continues. Because the other half was pulled, that observer notices that there was a block change. And that is what pushes the machine along. On Bedrock Edition, Sadly, this exact design just doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know why, it seems like it should. There is a workaround though, where if you add a normal piston after the observer and then have another observer observing that piston, then it all works fine. I'm not, I literally don't know why this is required, but it is one of the simplest ways to make a flying machine on the Bedrock version. So that's how we make a flying machine. But how do we make this an elevator? Well, instead of it being on its side, add it vertical and then it'll go up or go down depending on which way the first observer is set off. Pistons can push a total of 12 blocks, no more. So as long as the amount of blocks associated with either the push or the pull is 12 or under, you could add like a whole nother room or more slime blocks to make your elevator look cool. We do need to stop the flying machine eventually, and that's easily done with something that is immovable. There are a ton of blocks in Minecraft that cannot be moved by pistons. Any of them will work. Normally, the easiest thing is just obsidian. So, how do we make a piston elevator on Java Edition and on Bedrock Edition? Let's start with Java. So, we are going to build this in the Java version of the game. The absolute minimum number of blocks is in my hot bar right here, and also assumed in this number is some type of building block. You could basically replace the stone with that. So, to start off, we are going to dig out four blocks away 
then we're gonna break out two on the side and then dig out three blocks. At the bottom here, place one of your obsidian. Now we're going to build what you're going to stand in as the elevator moves. Start off by putting down your first block, then a bit of slime, then you can put down two more blocks, and then on the back of that, you're going to add another slime all the way up. You're gonna continue this around, and then your ceiling block, just like that. Now you can actually build the uh, moving mechanism for this, and that is going to look like an observer facing down. On top of that, you're going to add your sticky piston, make sure that it is facing up. Then you're going to add two slime blocks on top of that, and then another observer, make sure the arrow is facing downwards. This one was facing upwards, and then a sticky piston below that. And this is ready to go. So make sure that you put some type of obsidian above where you want this to end. And I like to put it, uh, you, could, you could put it on the observer face, but I think it's better to put it on the slime face so that we can update the observer later. So we're gonna come up here, just cause I'm in creative mode, I'm just going to use set block and make this obsidian. There we go. On this design, I hooked up a button to send the elevator on. So let's go ahead and do that. You could start off by creating some type of frame around your elevator. And then I put the button right here on that frame. On the opposite side of that, we're gonna put down one block just to hold our redstone. And that redstone is going to come over here and point over to this block. That'll just be a block with a redstone torch. Once I put down this redstone torch, that will update this observer. So it's going to head up into <laughs> the sky. Good thing we put down that obsidian block earlier. Now, whenever you hit this button, that will flash that redstone torch, which will set off the observer. Up here, it's time to build our second floor. So we can basically just extend this as some flooring here. And the only thing we really need is another way to set this off back towards the bottom. So we're gonna add that button in the same spot. On the other side, we still need a block to hold our redstone. And this time, uh, we're gonna do things a little bit differently because if we were to power this with a redstone torch, some weird stuff happens. Because of how Java Edition does its redstone, this redstone torch, even though it is so far away, will be powering this block. So we cannot have a redstone torch be the activator of this observer. We need to use something else. Instead, we're going to use a trap door, which will be then powered by a redstone torch. So we're gonna send that down there and I'm gonna build a temporary block off to the side. And then when we put a redstone torch there, that will activate that trap door. So over here from our redstone, we are going to build up one, two, three blocks just to get underneath that block. And we're gonna connect redstone up to here and then put a torch right here. And that way we can bridge that gap. So now when we hit this button, that trap door is activated without causing any issues to our elevator. Obviously, you can decorate this as, as much as you want. A nice thing about this design is you can put anything here. You don't have to worry about it being uh, attached to any of the slime. So we can jump in our elevator, hit the button. You'll notice this side has a wall. <laughs> None of these do. You may want to add some walls and such. Glass is a really option, a really cool option for that. And then we are up here at the top. Then we can hit the button again to head back down. This all looks really, really cool. Now moving on to bedrock. Over here on bedrock, this is what we will be making. You step into the elevator, hit the button, and it will send you to the second floor. There's a few disadvantages, one being that you don't get a ceiling tile because of the size of the elevator itself. And the elevator is a tiny bit slower than the Java version. But other than that, everything is basically the same. 
So, to start off your build, you will need just a clear area. We're gonna use this right here. And start off by digging one, two, three, four blocks away, then two by two there. Knock out these bottom two like so, and then add your obsidian. That's actually exactly the same as the Java Edition, but this is going to be where the observer is looking. So we're going to want to make sure that the observer has a clear way to, uh, to see some type of block. So we need to clear that away as well. Now we're gonna start off by building the platform you're going to stand on whenever it is moving. So start off with whatever block you want to be the floor, then add another, uh, then add a slime block, then the walls, and then add slime blocks up the back of this, just like so. You don't get a roof block with this one. Sorry, we need to save blocks somewhere. Now, move on to your observer. Make sure that you can see that dot on the top. Then a piston. Make sure that it can fire in some direction. Then an observer looking at that piston. Then a sticky piston. Now add four slime blocks onto that. And on the opposite side, you're going to do the same thing. Observer piston firing off in a random direction, observer, and then a sticky piston. And that is good to go. Once we update this observer, it's gonna fly off into the sky. So we wanna make sure that it stops somewhere. So wherever your second floor is, make sure that you put a piece of obsidian down. I use a command, there is my obsidian. Now let's go ahead and activate a button so that we can actually use this and I'm just going to build a frame right here, and then I'm going to put the button right there. On the other side of the button, we need a block for our redstone to sit on, and this redstone is just going to snake down to where the observer is, and once I put down this, it'll see the block change, and it will launch into the sky. Good thing we have that obsidian there. Wherever it lands, this will be your second floor, or of course, if you already had a plan for it, there you go, now you're here at the second floor. Now all we have to do is activate this observer to head back down. So we're going to add a button in the same spot that we did on the bottom floor. Then we're going to hook up some redstone. So we're just going to block up until we get close to where that observer is. And how I would like to do this is have uh, this block right here powered by redstone. And then we can uh, easily add a trap door to that. And that trap door will be what updates this observer. So we grab our trap door and we slap that on right here. That's going to activate the whole elevator. So it's gonna head down. But now when we hit this button, that trap door will move and that movement will update the observer. So this should all work like we expect. Hit this button and our elevator takes off. Once we get to the second floor, it should stop, then hit this button, and the elevator will head back down. You can do whatever you want in order to decorate this. All of this space on either side, uh, that is free game, as long as it doesn't touch any of the slime blocks, you can put down other blocks. If you really, really, really want a roof, for your elevator, there's a few things you can do. Basically, we're at max of 12 blocks here. So you could remove uh, these blocks right here, and then you could add one here and here, and that would be under the 12 block limit. So you could have a floor and a roof, it's just that your wall is gonna be slime. If you do this, make sure that your obsidian is below a slime, so put it over there if that's what you end up doing. But this is completely customizable. So starting off, you know, we have eight blocks here. That means that we have four blocks to uh, play around with. So if you wanted to, you could do something like this. So it would be the ninth block, the 10th and the 11th block, and that's a cool looking floor. And so this could just, you know, be the, you know, it could be a two wide floor or whatever. You could also just add just some slime blocks right here. And then this could be a really, really bouncy way to get up and down. <laughs> if I do that over here and I hit the button, 
you'll notice that this like will launch me <laughs> way up. It's like a trampoline, uh, trample, uh, a trampoline. Uh, it got stuck here because none of these slime can hit any other block. So right there, that was more than the blocks allowed. So it got all messed up. Okay, that's the piston elevator out of the way, but there are a few other elevators in Minecraft that are a little easier to make if you don't want to go crazy with the redstone and slime blocks. Bubble columns are a great choice for vertical elevators. If you put down some soul sand and then water source blocks above that soul sand, you will have this bubble column that will shoot you into the sky. While you're in the bubble column, your air level, which is like those little bubbles on the side of your HUD, that does not decrease. In fact, it will increase up to maximum. So you don't have to worry about drowning while you're inside of the bubble column. Also, pro tip, if you want to add some water source blocks, not just flowing water, uh, an easy thing to do is to add down some kelp and then bone mill that thing like to infinity and beyond. Then all of the water blocks that used to be flowing blocks will now become source blocks. So the bubble column will increase. And then you can just break the bottom of it and all that stuff will go to the top and just collect it there. Bubble columns are great for going up, but what about going down? You could use a bubble column to go down as well if you use a magma block, but to be honest, this is pretty slow. And you could just not use all that water and just have it filled with air and have just one water source block at the bottom to break your fall. If you put it just above where the area that you're like aiming for, uh, you can actually stop the water from flowing with a sign or a fence gate, and then you fall straight through the water and no damage dealt, you're all good to go. It's a way faster way of getting down instead of taking that bubble column, which can kind of take a little while. Now, I mentioned that there is something that the Bedrock players can pull off which looks really, really cool. I, I, this is a glitch for sure, and I don't know how long it's gonna be in Minecraft, but it's working right now. If you create a normal bubble column, like you know what you would always expect uh, with the, you know, how to make a bubble column, and then you take powder snow and you put that where the water should be, start at the bottom where the soul sand is, and then go up, the water is gone, but the bubbles and the bubble column are still there. This works even if you like save and reopen, like reload your world, uh, it'll still be there. So this isn't just like a client side glitch. It seems to be saved with the world. It looks really, really cool. And it doesn't require anything to contain the water because the water isn't there anymore. So you don't need to build up like sides to contain the water. Like I said, that only works in Bedrock Edition though. Uh, it looks really cool, so that's pretty impressive. And there you have it, more information than you'll probably ever need to know about Minecraft elevators. Hope that you found this video useful. If you did, please subscribe. That would really help me out. Also, leave a like and a comment down below letting me know what you're thinking. Uh, you know, you, if you hate it, give it a dislike. If you love it, give it a like and tell me about it in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.